In this exercise, we are given several inequalities, then asked to graph the interval, and then express the interval using interval notation. Looking at the first inequality, we have x less than five. Because the inequality is less than, not less than or equal to, five is not in the interval, which means we begin by graphing or plotting an open point or open circle on five. The open point indicates this value is not in the interval. If it said less than or equal to, then we'd have a closed point indicating the value is in the interval. And then because the inequality is x less than five, values less than five are to the left, we now graph to the left. Notice how the values approach negative infinity. This is the graph for the inequality x less than five. Now let's express the interval using interval notation. Because the values approach negative infinity to the left and positive five to the right, we begin with negative infinity, comma, five, and now we need to decide whether to the right or left we have a square bracket or rounded parenthesis. For positive or negative infinity, we always have a rounded parenthesis, and then because the interval does not include five, we also have a rounded parenthesis to the right of five. If it included five, we would have a square bracket to the right of five. For b, we have x greater than negative two. Because the inequality is greater than, not greater than or equal to, negative two is not in the interval. We begin by making an open point or open circle on negative two. This indicates negative two is not in the interval. And now because the inequality is x greater than negative two, the values are greater than negative two to the right, we graph to the right approaching positive infinity. And now for the interval notation, the values are approaching negative two to the left and positive infinity to the right. We begin with negative two comma infinity. Because negative two is not in the interval, we have a rounded parenthesis to the left. And for positive and negative infinity, we always have a rounded parenthesis. This is the interval using interval notation. Next, we have x less than or equal to negative one. Because the inequality is less than or equal to negative one, negative one is in the interval. We make a closed point on negative one this time because negative one is in the interval. The interval is x less than or equal to negative one. Values are less than negative one to the left. We graph to the left, approaching negative infinity, which means for interval notation, we begin with negative infinity comma negative one. For negative infinity, we always have a random parenthesis. Because the interval includes negative one, we have a square bracket to the right of negative one. So we can say the interval is closed on negative one for C, and for B, we can say the interval is open on negative two. D is a little bit different. D, we have x equals three. Because the interval includes three, we make a closed point on three. And this is the only number or only value in the interval, so we are done with the graph. It seems a little strange to express this using interval notation, but the interval begins and ends with three, so one way to express this using interval notation would be three comma three, and because three is in the interval, we would have a square bracket to the left of three and to the right of three. Another way to express this using set notation would be to put a three in braces, which would look like this. For E, we have x greater than or equal to two. The interval includes two. We make a closed point on two. We have x greater than or equal to two. Values greater than two are to the right. We graph to the right, approaching positive infinity. Using interval notation, the interval goes from two and approaches infinity. It includes two. We have a square bracket to the left of two. Positive infinity goes to the right forever, and therefore it's never going to include infinity. We make a round of parenthesis to the right of infinity. The last two are compound inequalities. There's a couple of ways to read this. We can read it from left to right as negative three less than or equal to x less than four, but we can also start with the variable and read this from right to left as well as left to right. We could say x is greater than or equal to negative three and x is less than four. Either way is correct.
Looking at the inequality symbol though, notice how negative three is in the interval and positive four is not. So we make a closed point on negative three and an open point on positive four. Again, we can read this as x is greater than or equal to negative three. So we would graph to the right of negative three. But x is also less than four, so we graph to the left of four, which means this compound inequality is the interval between these two values, including negative three and not including four. To express this using interval notation, we begin at negative three and we end at four. The interval includes negative three. We make a square bracket to the left of negative three. It does not include four. We use a rounded parenthesis to the right of four. And finally for G, we can read this as negative eight less than x, less than or equal to zero. Or we can read this as x is greater than negative eight and x is less than or equal to zero. The interval does not include negative eight because we read this x greater than negative eight. We graph an open point on negative eight and x is also less than or equal to zero. Zero is in the interval. So we graph a closed point on zero and we graph all the values between negative eight and zero. This is the graph of the interval. The interval is between negative eight and zero. Negative eight is not in the interval. We have a run of parenthesis to the left of negative eight. The interval does include zero and therefore we have a square bracket to the right of zero. So again, if the endpoint is included, we use a square bracket. If it's not included, or if it's plus or minus infinity, we always use a rounded parenthesis. I hope you found this helpful.